today we're going to make focaccia bread and this is a lot of fun it's very easy to make and the whole family always loves it I'm calling this spring focaccia because we're going to collect some spring water these are my kids right here they are collecting spring water and it, for some reason it's always a lot of fun to use uh, spring water for bread making here they are many years ago collecting water from the same spring so I'll leave a link in the description area if you would like to find a spring near you. It's free to collect the spring water and there are locations all over the world. So check that out if you'd like to do the same thing. Of course you don't have to collect spring water to make focaccia, I'm just making it more of an event. <laughs> my long term subscribers, you know I like to use a bread machine for my bread making. I'm a busy mom and it sure does make life a lot easier to put my flour and water in a machine and press the start button. <laughs> so. Um, this is a screenshot of my local Craigslist. Maybe if you don't have a bread machine, check Craigslist for a used one. Give it a try that way and just see how you like using a bread machine. Um, they are very inexpensive that way. And just one thing I'd like to point out though, make sure that your bread machine has the kneading paddle in the pan if you buy one used. These are very hard to match up to a used bread machine. If you don't have that, the bread machine is pretty much useless. <laughs> so I mentioned this is going to be a spring focaccia. I'm also going to use spring wheat and some spring herbs. So let's get started here. I'm going to go ahead and get my oven a little bit warm. I'm set, putting it on its lowest setting and this is just where I like to rise my bread. I'm going to go ahead and warm up my spring water. Now with a bread machine you don't have to get the water very warm. It's usually between 80 and 90 degrees so I'm just going to let that warm up on the stove for a few minutes. Meanwhile, I'll go ahead and prepare my flour. Now I love to use King Arthur flour. This is a bread flour. It is uh, wonderful for bread making. I'm also going to add to this some spring wheat berries. The spring wheat berries have a little bit more protein in them than the winter berries. So there's my other element of spring in the bread. <laughs> and so I'll just mill that down. This is just going to give it a little bit more of that rustic um, texture that I'm looking for. And so I'll go ahead and sift it and then I will measure it. I'll leave the measurements for all of the ingredients in the description area below. So I'm going to put a little bit of salt in here along with some sugar and then I'm going to test the temperature of the water. You don't want to bring it to a boil. Like I said, you only need to have it between about 80 and 90 degrees for a bread machine. So I'm going to test the temperature here. This is not something I normally do. I make way too much bread to test the temperature every time I make bread, but I want to show you the way to do it so that you will know. I usually just test with my finger and I know kind of the temperature that it needs to be to make the bread. So now I'm going to warm up some more water. This is some, I'm going to actually bring this water to a boil. Now in my bread pan I'll go ahead and add my water, my olive oil, and my dry ingredients. I want to go ahead and mix those up pretty good first before I put them in my bread pan. And then I'm going to make a little indentation on the top of the flour. And this is where I'll put my bread machine yeast. Now we just want to put it on the dough setting for your bread machine and get it going. Now I'm going to turn my oven off. I do not want a hot oven to rise my bread. And my water is boiling, so I'm going to pop this into the oven. I'm just going to get the oven nice and humid. I like it to be a little bit warm, but not too warm about um, it'll be about 80 90 degrees by the time I put my bread in there to rise for the second time so we'll go ahead and get um, my topping going I'm going to use some tomatoes so I'm just going to roast these a little bit in my toaster oven and I'll drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil first make sure they're nice and coated and I'll pop them in uh, the toaster oven uh, at about 400 degrees and that should take about 20 minutes Meanwhile, I'll go up to the garden. I'm going to get some spring herbs. I'm going to use Greek oregano. I just really, really love Greek oregano. We'll go ahead and just pull these right off the stem. And just so you know, I cut all that oregano after I made this bread and dried it. It was ready for drying. You want to make sure you dry your herbs before they start to flower. And when you use fresh herbs for bread making, always put a little bit of oil on them just so that helps retain the flavor. Okay, so I'm just going to toss them gently with olive oil. And then also for my topping, I want to use some garlic and some minced shallots. So I'm just going to put that in some olive oil as well. 
Now my tomatoes are done. I let them cool off for about 10 minutes and I'm just going to remove the skin. You can skip this step if you want to use tomatoes and maybe just cut your small grape or cherry tomatoes in half. And, but make sure if you do that that your tomatoes are at least at room temperature and they're not cold. Now with focaccia we should use a coarse salt and I did not have a coarse salt but I did have this and so what I decided to do was just to crush it up a little bit in a bag and that kind of gave me the coarse texture that I was looking for. Now I'm going to prepare my pan and I'm using parchment paper and an aluminum baking pan okay if you don't have this just use a regular like casserole dish or something put some olive oil in it and that will help give you a nice crisp crust that you're looking for on the bottom you can also sprinkle a little bit of salt on there as well I'm just using the parchment paper and I will include a link for you if you'd like to see how I like to cut my parchment paper to fit not just the bottom of a pan but also the sides now while the bread is making I can go and for about an hour Go get some chores done or whatever it is I need to do. The bread is kneading and it's rising for the first time. And I'm going to rise it again in just a few minutes, but I'm just getting some things done here. And so back to the kitchen. About an hour later, the bread should be ready. And it has doubled in size, and so I can go ahead and put it in my baking pan here. Now I don't want to touch it for about five minutes. Just let it rest there for just a few minutes. And now we can put some oil on our hands and we're just going to kind of spread it out in the pan. Okay, and now drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil and we can start to put our topping on. I'm using a Kalamata olive and this is kind of a vinegary brine or red wine brine on it and I'm just going to tear them in half and just kind of push them right down into the bread along with also the tomatoes little pieces of Greek oregano I'm just kind of mixing up every bite and in some of it I'm putting a little bit of uh, goat cheese with a little bit of the Greek oregano and an olive just kind of mix it up I'm just making it you know so every little bite is a little bit different and the I'll go ahead and tell you the goat cheese with the olive and the Greek oregano, those were the best bites. <laughs> and now I'll just spread a little bit of more olive oil and the garlic and the shallots over the top with some of the Greek oregano. And now my oven is nice, it's not hot, but it's a little bit humid and I'm going to go ahead and let this rise for the second time. After about one hour, you can go anywhere from about 40 minutes to an hour, remove your pan and your focaccia should be rising very nicely and we'll just go ahead and put a little bit of the coarse salt on top. Do you see how it's rising up over your topping? That's really what you want with your focaccia. Okay, we'll put it back in the oven to bake at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure to close your door gently. Okay, we don't want to mess up everything we've been working on. After about 15 minutes, I'm going to remove it from my pan and also from the parchment paper and put it directly on my rack so that the crust can crisp up. Okay, now if you're using it on a, in a casserole dish with the olive oil that I mentioned, you may not need to do this step because you'll have a nice crisp crust anyway. But this is what I'm doing. Test it after about 15 more minutes. You wanna test your crust to make sure it's nice and crisp and then you can remove it from your oven, put it on a cooling rack and we'll put a little bit more olive oil on it. Let it cool for about 10 more minutes before you cut it and use a bread knife, a little something with a serrated edge on it, works beautifully, but I love to use my carving knife for cutting bread. And you want the inside it to be nice and light and fluffy and kind of spongy. Your crust should be nice and crisp. Now this is not where I stop. I like to take it one step further because I really think this makes the focaccia. Um, on all of your sides put a little bit more olive oil and I also sneak in a little bit more salt too but I like salt so <laughs> I'm going to just kind of dip the sides and that spongy bread is just going to soak up that olive oil and then we're just going to kind of toast it off in a cast iron skillet and it is amazing I just love how it turns out when you take this one little extra step and if you're cooking out with the family you can make this bread in the morning and then while they're cooking out you can make this as an appetizer and just put it right on the grill and it is wonderful I mean they'll, your, your whole family is just going to eat it right up so there's a lot of different things that you can use your bread for I also like to use it to make little sandwiches 
So this right here was just a little BLT. I put some aioli on it with some tomatoes and some smoked bacon with some fresh lettuce from the garden. And there you have it. A lot of little tiny BLTs. We had those for lunch and it was a wonderful thing. <laughs> So I hope that you can try this bread machine recipe. Um, let me know how you like it if you do. Um, your bread should just pull apart wonderfully and be nice and crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. So I hope you can try it. Thanks so much for watching. Have a beautiful day.